in 2006, there were a total of 45,000 596 PhDs earned across all disciplines in the United States. Of those, 1,659 went to African Americans. In 2011, uh, that, that's the year I earned my PhD in physics, there were a total of 826 people uh, in that class in the United States earning physics PhDs. Of those, 17 went to African Americans. Uh, from the end, from the decades, from 1972 to 2012, there were a total of 28,859 physics PhDs awarded. Of those 28,859, 354 went to black men and 66 went to black women. In 2002, of the 3,302 PH, physics PhDs working in United States National Labs, 16 were black. And it's not really changing much. Uh, from the period 1977 to 1982, those five years, there were a total of 41 PhDs awarded in physics to, to, to black people. In the same Time span 2001 to 2006. I have all these notes in front of me. Uh, it was 64. That's not changing much. In 2015, blacks made up about 15% of the U.S. population aged 20 to 24. You know, the college age. Uh, but less than 3% of physics bachelor degrees went to, to black men. And that's less than 2% of physics PhDs. Uh, the five-year average from 2013 to 2017 is that there are 220 black bachelors of physics awarded every year. <sighs> Something's wrong, right? Something's wrong. And that has nothing to do with ability the black kids are just as capable, just as intelligent, just as hardworking. If you list all the qualities you need to earn a PhD in physics, if you list all the qualities you need, you look out for uh, to carve a path in independent research and science, like uh, that has absolutely nothing to do with race. Hard work, perseverance, grit, analytic skills, critical thinking. Something else is going wrong. Something else is going wrong. There are massive pipeline issues. An undergraduate department, a graduate department could hire or give uh, awards to or, or positions or jobs or take on as students to every black applicant they can and they still wouldn't be enough because they, for some reason black kids aren't applying. They're not interested, they're not applying to uh, bachelor's programs in physics. And if they get a bachelor's in physics, they're not applying to a physics PhD program, graduate program. Something is preventing them. Something is preventing them from networking the right way, from getting uh, good educations so that they know the right people, so that they know how to put together a compelling uh, a record in high school so that they can f even feel like they can compete. Something is not working at the bachelor level, at the undergrad level. There's the whole like perceived image of a scientist. If you think of a scientist, you probably think of an old white guy. How does that, how does someone growing up in that atmosphere, assuming that science is done by old white men, you just think, eh, it's not for me. Not for me. There's bias. I... Uh, I've read letters before. I, I've, I've served on committees for fellowships and admissions and all this, and I've read letters of recommendation, and I've seen letters for black students who 
according to you know the everything else in their application packet was stellar like wow this this kid is a genius and then the letter is like not matching what it should say and not matching what the same letter writer says about white students i've seen it there's outright discrimination there's the inability to network. You know, if you don't get into the right undergrad school, you have a hard time getting positions that make your application for grad school look even better. And then you have trouble getting into the right graduate school, which makes it hard to get postdocs and then faculty positions. I mean, look, look at your local university. Your nearest university, look at their department faculty, look at where they got their degrees. It's not a very long list of where people get their physics PhDs if they want to continue in research careers. And then if you look at graduate programs of where they're drawing their undergrad students from, it's not a very long list. It's the same name cycled over and over and over at the same institutions. Massive pipeline issues. Uh, one university investigation found that black professors were 33 times more likely to be denied tenure. It's um, it's heartbreaking. To realize, to recognize that there is a massive imbalance in the system. That there is a community of people where the next Einstein could be walking around right now going to middle school. But we're never going to find out because the system is going to fail that kid. And whatever insights that kid had into the nature of quantum gravity or understanding black holes or the earliest moments of the Big Bang or, or advancing, like any question that we have, there are black kids who are capable of solving that problem or contributing to solving that problem. The next Nobel Prize winner, the, you know, the Nobel Prize winner in 2050. But we're not getting that. We're not getting those Einsteins. We're not getting those Curies. We're failing the students. We're missing opportunities. We're missing our chance to enrich the field, to enliven the field, get perspectives and voices and ideas. We're missing the chance to teach students, even a bachelor's in physics, and then send them out into the world thinking like physicists, which is a very powerful way to think if I do say so myself. We're missing all that. Because we keep tripping over ourselves. We keep, we, keep, we keep relying on systems. And you think scientists would be the last people to rely on assumptions and systems and let them sit unchallenged. But here we are, the entire academic job market and structure of higher education and pipelining of going from high school student to full-time researcher rests on decades, if not centuries, of assumptions that if you're smart, you'll make it. That's not how it works. That's never been how it works. Smart people get shoved to the side, marginalized, forgotten about, skipped over all the time. And it's when we look at race issues and how persons of color and minorities and it, it, like try to go in the system where it's supposed to be a meritocracy, where it's supposed to be like the, we only take the best and brightest and the cream of the crop and those naturally rise to the top. And then that's what we'll take. It doesn't matter. Well, it, apparently it does matter because there's so many things broken with the pipeline. How do we solve this? I, I don't, I don't know. Why am I talking about it? Because it deserves being talked about. It deserves having some light, some attention shed on this, that uh, the issues that 
black people are facing, minorities are facing, come in many, many forms. One of them is path to higher education, path to research, path to science. That path is a thousand times harder than than the path I had to get my PhD. It starts from a very young age. It starts with bias. It starts with discrimination. It just it starts with unequal access, unequitable access to resources and opportunities. And it just goes from there. And then as a student or promising student gets older, the incentives just continue to stack against them. And so you end up with a situation where like, essentially no black people are getting PhDs, even though they are more than qualified, more than intelligent enough, more than capable, more than durable enough to get a PhD. They're not. And the world of science, the world of physics, the world of research is missing out on that opportunity. To have another brilliant mind among their ranks trying to solve some of the greatest mysteries of the universe. Why? Why? I don't know why. Maybe it's because we assume the system is working and then we just keep on going. I don't know what to do to fix it. I have no easy answers. I have no quick solutions. But I hope I hope I was able to start a conversation. And I'll see you next week.